So with our scene now animated, it's going to be time to add a little bit of lighting and render out our finished result. To do that, we're going to jump over into the layout workspace. Now by default, Blender has a light and we can turn that back on here in the viewport so that we can see it. But to see the effects of any lights, we need to change our display mode here from our shaded viewport over to this here, which is our rendered viewport. If I click on that, you can see now we have a very different look. We now have some shadows in our scene, which are being cast by this light up at the top here. But at the moment, everything is quite dull and dark. And we also don't have an environment in here that we can cast some shadows onto. Before we go any further with actually adding lights, we're going to create a simple environment. Now to do that, for now I'm just going to change back to my shaded display. Now there's a quick way to do that. If you hold down your Z key on your keyboard, you'll find you have this little pie menu appear. And we're currently in rendered view. We have our solid, our material preview and a wireframe view. So I'm just going to change to the solid view and to do that just drag across to the side and release the Z key. So to give us a simple environment to work with, I'm going to start out as we often do with a cube. So I'm going to hit Shift A, add a mesh, and we're adding in a cube. Obviously that has been added where this 3D cursor is, which I hadn't reset. So I'm actually going to delete that. I'm just going to hit X to delete. I'm going to now return this 3D cursor back to the origin. So we can just right click and snap cursor to world origin. Now if I hit shift A again, I can add that cube back in and again it's back at the origin. So we want to make this cube a lot bigger. So I'm going to hit S to scale it and we're just going to scale this thing up. But I'm going to select all of those values and we're going to change that to something like 20 and we will move it up in Z by 10 meters, which means our ground plane is now aligned with our origin. Now, obviously we have some sharp corners on this environment and I want to get rid of them. So what I'm actually going to do is add a bevel modifier. We have to remember that we need to reset the scale. So I'm going to hit control A and apply my scale. And now I can adjust this amount value and increase this number of segments to round out the edge there. I'm going to increase this amount quite a bit. Somewhere around there should be good. I'm just going to increase the segments again slightly and then right click shade smooth. And that just smooths out this background just a little bit more. Just these values, just a little bit more. to give us that smooth fall off. At the moment, there's no material assigned to this. So we're going to go into our shading view. So we just have this default gray color. I'm going to add in a new material and we're going to give this again a yellowish kind of color, slightly different to the swing. Somewhere around there looks all right. And that should do. Let's call this world. And we'll jump back into our layout view. Now I'm going to rename this from cube to environment. And now we should be ready to add in some lights. So again, I can turn on my rendered preview. And you can see now we are casting shadows from this light onto the ground but everything is rather dark at the moment. Now, as we're adding our lights, we want to really see what our final scene looks like from the camera point of view. So what we're going to do is actually split this viewport. So I'm going to go over to the side here, right click, I'm going to add in a vertical split, bring it across here, and we're going to change this view to our camera view. So we can just click on this little camera icon if we want. I'm going to hide my toolbar by hitting T and hide the side panel by hitting N. And we don't really want all of these extra distractions in this view. So we can actually just turn off all of these overlays here. But we do want to see this in our rendered preview. 
You can see here these icons, the one is missing. We can actually drag this out to be able to see that if uh, that viewport's too small. Or if you remember, we can actually hit the Z key and we can just change into the rendered view that way. Now we've got a bit of space around the side of our camera view here. So we can actually just hit the home key when in the camera view and that will frame it up nicely for us.